everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how we made this DIY planter outside. It was so easy to make, so cheap and I really hope you enjoy the video. And if you do enjoy this video, do consider subscribing to my channel for lots more gardening and allotment style vlogs. I don't know if you remember our dodgy path at the back of the garden, but this is what it now looks like. Ta-da! So we just put some uh, gravel down basically and a little... Um, What's it called? A weed membrane underneath it. It's quite a cheap solution, but there we go. It's not perfect and we ran out of gravel. So I've got some more gravel bags today and I'm just gonna finish making the path and then hopefully you'll see the difference it'll make. We went with gravel over like paving stones or bricks or anything else just because it's so forgiving. Um, you don't need to make the ground completely flat. You don't need to worry about the gradient of this going up because it's kind of on a bit of a slope. Um, and it just hides a multitude of sins really because the gravel just gets into every nook and corner and yeah, just covers it up and just looks really smart and nice. So I'll get on and get the other gravel bags now. <laughs> complete <laughs> I'm so super proud of this it cost us about 30 quid to do this and it's just a case of getting all the rocks up putting some weed membrane down and these are um, fence posts that we've just put either side fill it with gravel but later on what we're going to do today is build a big planter and the planter is going to go just against this fence here and then we're going to plant it up with some beautiful plants and wood chip the rest of the area around it. So that's the job for today. This is how far we've got with the, the bed frame at the moment, looking literally like a bed. I suppose that's why they call them flower beds. There you go. Serious, come on. Gotta get this done. Perfect. For the yes. top bits, it's just holding it up yes. now. Guys, the frame is complete. This is the cuboid we have created. <laughs> and now we're gonna clad it, as Dave keeps saying, with this stuff, which is um, what is that stuff, babe? Uh, gravel boards. Gravel boards. Well, it's wood. Um, yeah. Because it's cheaper than buying decking boards, it's cheaper to buy gravel boards. Part 17 of making the world's tallest raised bed ever, which we did not think would be this tall, but there we go. Uh, we're going to start putting the gravel boards around the bottom to secure it and building it up panel by panel. Such an experiment, by the way. This is not, not saying this is how you should make them, but there we go. We're going to need a lot of compost too, aren't we? Yeah. It's like a coffin. <laughs> Keep it together, come on. <laughs> Stay together. I'm talking to you now from within the coffin. <laughs> I mean flower bed. Um, yeah, it's looking quite good. We've made it a bit smaller than we thought it was going to be, um, which means we've got loads of wood over to make another one. <laughs> Dave doesn't know that yet. Um, but yeah, I'll show you what it looks like if I can climb out of it. There it is. We've just made it one smaller. So it would have been another board higher, which I thought was too high. So now it's one smaller. It's going to go up against that, hide all this rubbish on the floor and have beautiful flowers in it. Not everything we do goes right. This, I think, has gone pretty well. Be proud of it. Here he comes. Man of the hour. <laughs> He's had enough of me. <laughs> Just in case anyone out there is foolish enough to want to try and copy what we've done, <laughs> we made the flimsy frame out of um, the flimsy frame out of these sort of long bits of wood. Um, and then to that, we attached gravel boards around. Um, and then just chop the top off when we got to the how high we wanted it to be. Then we put these in 
sporadically around it to try and keep the gravel board straight and that's it that's it i'm leaving an open bottom for drainage and everything um and that's pretty much it just in case anyone out there wanted to give this crazy thing a go there you go the last last piece of the puzzle oh is this is this grand decking boards which are going to go oh god sorry around the top as a bit of a frame a border around it just to hide all that stuff you see and it'll sort of look like that with a with a thing around it Welcome back guys, the planter is all made um, and I've just put in a final layer of grass. I've got some cardboard in here and I've just clipped some of my grass from the lawn and I've just put that on top as one kind of final push for some green manure. So there we go, we've also got some of my daffodil clippings on here as well and I'm just going to top it up with another bag of compost and get planting. Finally, in the rain. <laughs> We did it, we made it. Oh. So I've really gone for plants to uh, try and attract as much wildlife as possible because that's really important to the kids and I really want a really nice wildlife area. So I've got some lavender to go along the front which is gonna make a really nice little uh, hedging along the front and attract lots of butterflies and bees hopefully. So lots of lavender going in. Scabia, scabiosa. This is the Kudo pink one, so it's gonna have pink flowers. Scabias attract a lot of butterflies because they love the great big wide open flowers. So this is a butterfly attractor and I also got the same scabia but in butterfly blue as a bit of a contrasting colour which I thought might be really nice. I've gone for an Armenia, Armeria. I've never had one of these before. It's a deep rose colour which I really like and apparently it's really good for butterflies and bees as well. You can see the little flowers here. So pretty, they're made up of lots of them. I've got a rose, this is a patio rose, it's called the Sweet Dream and I've gone for a rose because it's kind of a cottage garden feel and no cottage garden is complete without a rose so I've gone for this colour which is a nice soft peachy colour I don't know if you can hear me above the rain now, I'm going to keep going <laughs> and finally I invested in one of these a cordyline, which are, it's mainly kind of the structure the architectural kind of look, it's nice and big but also it can tolerate a lot of cold so hopefully we'll have something to look at when the weather gets a bit cold. So I'm going to whack all these in now and that's it. Exciting! Bloody rain! Right, that's what I'm thinking. It's really starting to come down now. I wonder if I should wait till later. bulk of it is in so we've got the lavenders along the front which will hopefully create a nice lavender hedge for um, all the butterflies and things and bees and then we've got the scabias sort of dotted around with the other one which I can't remember what it is <laughs> um, and then we've got this lovely architectural um, sort of I don't know if it's a grass or something but it's beautiful and it's very architectural and gives a lot of structure we've got the rose next to it which will take some time to grow but when it does it will be beautiful and then I forgot that I also picked up this verbena as well and verbena is a really nice purple flower which will create really really long spires with flowers on and you'll be able to see through it so I'm going to sort of dot these around a little bit um, and create so you'll be able to see through it if that makes sense so I'm going to put some of these in I don't quite know how these work I don't know if I've got more plants than I think I have 
um, because they're kind of packed in. Now I think there might be one plant per module, but I'm not sure. For instance, here, and I can see that's probably one. No, there's not. There's a few seeds. I think they've just whacked a load of seeds into each compartment. Um, I wonder if I can get more plants from this. So for instance, here, how many plants do you reckon I've got? Because I reckon there's two plants there, I think, but I don't know. Maybe I'll just whack it in as one plant and let it do its thing. Yeah, I'll whack it in as one plant. I don't want to kill it. Just like that. That'll grow up nicely there, I think. Right, I've broken a couple of the verbena up as an experiment to see if it lives or dies, but I really want verbena and I haven't grown it from seed and I thought it'd be easier to buy because it was only three quid. So a couple of them are broken up. This one here and that one over there were together and I've sort of ripped them apart. Um, but then the other ones I've dotted about. And I've also got some cosmos which will go in this bed, but this bed is now done. So I'll show you what it looks like now. Ta-da! That's our DIY massive planter, which hopefully will be really nice and grow up really big and nice and be really bushy and good for animals and wildlife. There you go, that's what I did. So, I hope you enjoy this little DIY gardening project if you do subscribe to my channel stay tuned for more vlogs coming up on my garden because I'm doing a lot of different things and this area now looks a lot nicer um, and I hope you're getting out in your gardens too thanks for watching everyone